Mark faces two vast deserts. The first stretches the length of western Peru, followed by the great Atacama Desert of Chile. To make matters worse, at this time of year, a relentless wind blows south to north. Cycling in this headwind is just like having a big sail on your bike and it pushing you the wrong way. It's the hardest condition to, to cycle through because it's relentless. It's utterly, utterly relentless. You're getting blasted the whole time by wind and often sand. There's no reward for battling from dawn till dusk through flat deserts against a, a headwind which feels like the steepest of hills all day. More than that, just being wind blasted the whole day takes it out of you. Despite being on the go for 12 hours a day, after a soul-destroying week, Mark's been pushed days behind schedule. This, uh, this headwind is just slowly beating me down. It's, uh, it's such, such low progress into this wind. I'm literally cycling along at walking pace. I feel so tired in the bike as well. The last couple of weeks have, uh, have really taken out of me and, um, Oh, I just, I just, I've got, um, I've still got a month to go to get to, to Aconcagua and I, I don't know if I can, I don't know how I can do it into this wind. This desert watering hole brings not only shelter, but a welcome encounter with a fellow adventurer. Lazaro Martinez Cruz is traversing the length of the Andes in a wheelchair to raise environmental awareness. It's quanto kilometers total? Bueno, la travesía de los Andes en total, bueno, no hemos, nos falta un poquito por por cumplir. Pero estamos más o menos sobre los 8.000 kilómetros. 8.000. 8.000 kilómetros de ruta. Eh, voy a hacerlo más o menos en, en 80 días. Yo salgo a, las, salgo a las 6 de la mañana y estoy llegando sobre las 5 y media, 6 de la tarde a la ruta de 100 kilómetros, 120, 130 kilómetros diarios. Okay. Es peligroso, pero afortunadamente pues Dios y la Virgen están con nosotros y ahí vamos. Ahí vamos en la lucha. And he's heading north, I'm heading south, and I'm sure we've got a very different speed anyway, but uh, absolutely brilliant to meet a, a guy like him. I mean, it really does put one thing into perspective. Felipe Aje. He's off again, his wheelchair is fixed. What an incredible character to come across on the roadside. That's off to the guy. That was uh, that was brilliant. That takes guts. While Lazaro heads north, propelled by a tailwind, Mark pushes on south. This is now a road for the faint-hearted. This is a harsh wilderness dominated by volcanoes and plagued by earthquakes. Despite suffering from long-term fatigue, to reach Aconcagua in time, 
Mark's got to cover over 2,000 miles in less than a month. This means he's pushing a massive 75 miles a day, often on poor roads. I came, uh, came flying down a hill there and uh, around a corner and there was a, a loud twang from the back wheel. I didn't even need to stop and check. I knew immediately that I'd uh, broken a spoke in my back wheel. It's so annoying. It's the last thing I need at the moment. I'm really, really pushing to get these miles in. Five hours later, Mark eventually limps into the nearest town. His body's crying out for sleep, but he's got hours of work ahead of him. Long days are paying off. Mark's approaching the Chilean border and is back on schedule. This is Chile. Second last country, and it's a biggie. A lie ahead lies 600 miles of Atacama Desert, and uh, yeah, what can I say? At least I've had an introduction to the desert already. in the North Chilean city of Arica, the last real civilization before the Atacama Desert, and a vital stop for food and supplies. The Atacama is 15 million years old and the driest place on Earth. A perfect desert. Blocked from moisture on both sides by the Andes Mountains and the Chilean coastal range, in places it hasn't rained for centuries. This is where NASA tested the Mars Viking probes. They found the soil contained no trace of life. Not even bacteria can survive some of the strongest ultraviolet rays on Earth. It's endless. The road goes without breaks or punctuation of any kind through this world of sand and wind and beating heat. <laughs> The, the, the scale and intensity of this desert. There is nothing living out here. There's no cactus. There's no lizards and snakes. This is as arid as it gets. To be pedaling through it, I think, is a fairly unnatural <laughs> ambition. I don't think, I don't think humans are meant to be here. It's a dead part of the world, and that's strange. To cycle for days and days and not see 